Hey, welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. This week we're reading Romans chapter 1 all week long. Zero excuse. Mm. And, well, we hope that it is working. Maybe after yesterday it might not work. <laughs> you may have, like, had to unsubscribe. Go do some backwards. <laughs> Unfollow. And untangle a lot of webs. But it's fun, right? It is fun to so think So I want to hear your thought on it. So I'll, I'll, re, I'll recap. Yep. Then I want to hear your thought, and then I'll I'll throw some more thoughts to you. Okay. Because here's what we're discussing. Romans 1.20 mm-hmm. said, I can know the invisible qualities of God. Mm-hmm. I can see the invisible qualities of God. And once I come into a relationship with God, you should be able to see the invisible God through me. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. But Romans 1.20 said this, that uh, through creation, I can clearly see the invisible power of God. So we talked about how the devil distorts the creation yep. uh the creation model, mm-hmm. right? Through evolution, through teaching in schools, through the debates we see between science and God. Can they agree? Will they ever agree? You know, and, and you're just going to have to pick a camp. Yeah, right. Because there's so much information in every camp. You either got to get in the science anti Bible camp, Bible anti science camp, or camp of science and the Bible work together. You're just going to have to pick one. Yeah. Because there's videos out there for all of them. Yeah. And so I, you know, over my. 40 plus years of really trying to study the Bible. I won't say 40, maybe thir- for sure 30. Uh, so for over the last 30 years of me studying the Bible, uh, I've landed on the Bible is definitely 100% true. Mm-hmm. And, and I have no threat from science at all. I don't believe there's anything science could say that would disprove God in the Bible or any, especially mathematics. I don't think there's anything mathematics could disprove that there is an existence of God. And that's where I've landed. I mean, dive down those YouTube videos too. Yep, yep. But the thought was this of, you know, if if I can debunk time, it mm-hmm. becomes hard to see creation, right? Yeah, right? Is the earth a million years old? Is it Bill? And we talked yesterday that the possibility that the thinking religiously is on day eight after God made Adam and Eve, day number eight, uh, Adam just ate the fruit and died 930 years later. And my thought was, well, well, it doesn't tell us that. Yeah, right. We just assume he ate the fruit the next morning. Mm-hmm. Like God said, don't eat that fruit. And Adam's like, oh, I think I'll eat the fruit, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, you know, maybe, maybe that could be true. But what we do know is that we don't know the time frame. Yeah. So we don't even know the time frame. But what we do also know is that there are other people on the planet, whether they're demons, angels, or humans. There's other people on the planet, and we're never told how they got there. We only can speculate. So we can speculate that they're uh, spirits from a demonic prior world, uh, or that I believe that they're the offspring of Adam and Eve. Uh, born long before the sin narrative because God has no, to me, God has no obligation to give us all the names of the children of Adam and Eve, Mm -hmm. only the names of the kids that are part of the redemptive story, Mm -hmm. and that is Cain and Abel. Yeah. What's your thought of that? Yeah, um, so Cain and Abel, they were, do you think that they were only counted because they were the first ones that caused labor pains because that was part of the the curse when Mm -hmm. they got kicked out Mm then? Well, now you'll have labor pains. I think that's true. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I think what is true is that the reason they show up mm-hmm. is they are part of the redemptive story to bring Jesus. Mm. So I need no redemptive story to bring Jesus as long as Adam and Eve aren't sinful. Yeah. And that could have been thousands of years, like I said yesterday, yeah, right. before they disobeyed. But the moment they disobeyed, we get the redemptive story. Right. So from Genesis 2, don't eat this fruit, to Genesis 3.15, his head, Jesus, will crush your heel. You know, his heel will crush your head. Jesus' heel will crush the servant's head. You know, Genesis 2 to 3, pretty short. You know, like, yeah, okay, well, they yeah. sinned and God immediately judged them. But from the time he told them mm-hmm. to the time they ate. We don't know. And why count if, yeah. they're, if they're made to live forever? And we know they're made to live forever because when they do sin, God says, I'm going to put an angel in front of the tree of life so they don't get back in there and eat it and perhaps live forever. So they were created to not die. Mm-hmm. The only way they would die, and this is something I want, I want to ask you, they weren't created to die. The only way they would die would be to eat the fruit, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when they eat the fruit... Death comes. Mm -hmm. Well, when death comes, God starts counting. Because death 
is the redemptive story of God. Right. So the moment they eat, God goes, we're counting. And from the time of your sin until the time the Messiah will come, we're on a, we're on a schedule. Right. We're on a time frame. Right. From the time you eat till the time we bury you, we're on a 930-year time frame. Yeah. And all throughout the Bible, God's clicking time now. Mm-hmm. I mean, pretty clear time. Yeah. Prophesying Cyrus to come, uh, the Daniel prophecies, you know, 1260 yeah. days. God is counting mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. The thousand year reign of Christ. God is counting time, yeah. you know? And I think that's I think that's kind of what happened. I think God said, I'm not obligated to give you all the names of the kids they had. Right. They were fulfilling, I believe they were fulfilling God's plan to be obedient to his command to be fruitful and multiply, yep. to fill the earth. They were doing it. Satan gets ticked. They're filling the earth. Oh my God, they're taking over. That used to be my earth. <laughs> I ruled and reigned. Come yep. down, create the sin. Sin happens. God says, now you die. We're counting time because we're headed to the end. Yeah. The beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega, the first, the last, the, the beginning and the end. And now we're going to count time. Makes pretty good sense because now the first kid born to the redemptive sinful story, labor pains, Cain. Mm-hmm. Cain kills Abel. Mark, who is he afraid of? All his brothers and sisters that are ticked at him. Yeah, right. You just screwed the whole thing over, yeah, man. What, yeah. what, you know, you killed your brother, mom, and dad, screwed the whole thing over. So <laughs> if that be true, you got all these people who potentially have taken over the earth. Sure. So what about them? Yeah. Like, does God judge them because Adam and Eve sinned? Think about this. If they really are out there, yeah. uh, thousands of offspring, yep. well, what do you do if you're the devil? Mm-hmm. I went to mom and dad, yeah. took them out in disobedience, and if mom and dad disobeys, right. a seed produces after its kind, yeah, right? right? Therefore, every kid out there will disobey. Yep. Cain will disobey. All of them will start disobeying. Yeah. That's why obedience to God will become so critical, mm-hmm. right? Abel tried to obey, Cain killed him, right? So he's out there going, man, they'll kill me. And I believe, you know, well, what about those people? Were they not sinners? How did God? I believe they're the ones that were corrupted by the Nephilim, mm. by the, that became the Nephilim, corrupted by the angels, that in Noah's day, God's like, yeah, there's nobody left but eight people. Mm. That's profound. That, is. <laughs> that God looks down at the universe and said, there's only eight people left on the planet. I wish wow. I would have never made the planet. <laughs> right. So either... And here's my thinking to that. I don't think God was looking down and seeing that they were so sinful mm-hmm. because God already had a plan for sin, mm-hmm. right? Right. He already had a plan for sin. It's, I'm going to bring my son. Mm-hmm. So I don't think God looked down at the earth and go, oh, so dad blames sinful, I'll just <laughs> kill them all. Yeah. All those sin was part of the outworking. Yeah. I think God looked down and saw a whole race of people that were corrupted by demonic influence so that there was no righteous seed left to bring Jesus except Noah. Right. And so God just annihilated all of the unrighteous seed now and left Noah. Why? Because when he started with Noah again, it's the redemptive plan. Right. And that's kind of, to me, when you start understanding things like this of creation, it goes, man, God is a good God. Like he thought about all this. We've screwed it up with religion, but man, he thought about all this. He wasn't afraid of science. Yeah. You know? It's good. Give me a thought on it. What you think? I feel really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> You're so awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee, Savannah, Georgia. But uh, you know, I don't, I don't say all that to make us feel dumb. Yeah. I say it that I think people don't think about creation. Mm-hmm. We just ask the same questions. What about his belly button? <laughs> what about the T Rex? What about dinosaurs? Yeah. Well, who was Cain's wife? And though, and I, I, my personal opinion, I think why that's important to people is they want to know God. Yeah. And we, we don't give answers. I don't know. Right. Dinosaurs never existed. There's those videos. Yeah. There's all fake. It's all fake bones. There's never been a T-Rex. <laughs> I mean, it's all out there. Right. But I think when somebody asks me, well, well did, did where did Cain get his wife? Or I think we should have answers. Mm-hmm. I don't think we should just go, I don't know. And so that's kind of why I always make jokes. And I'm just a Genesis dude, man. I Mm -hmm. live there. And this is why. Mm -hmm. Because I believe there's something about the book of Genesis, the creation of God, Mm -hmm. that lets me know God and have zero excuses. I can't use a T-Rex as an excuse. I can't use evolution as an excuse. Science is no excuse. Math is no excuse. God saw all of that and said, my creation is so brilliant. There's nothing you humans could throw at me that would give you an excuse to show that I did not create this. Yeah, I think this is kind of the reason why we're not confident in owning our 50 feet. Because 
well, what if they do come back and they're really knowledgeable about something and they ask me some kind of question about the universe or about creation or about Adam and his belly button and, and the list goes on and on and about that. But I don't know. I don't, mm-hmm. I, I don't have never taken the time to investigate the invisible qualities. Right. And there you go. The, the issue today is Christians don't take time to investigate. That's the problem. Yeah. That's why God is not seen in a lot of Christians today. That's why he's not talked about in a lot of Americanized gospel Christians, right? It, it, it's because I've never investigated the thing. Mm-hmm. It's what, What's your excuse? I've never investigated. I don't know. I don't really care. I just love Jesus. Yeah. Well, God even told you, you can know God through creation. Jesus is the new creation, you know, and, and so... He brings about the new creation for us. So that whole thinking of, oh, man, it just doesn't matter. You know, and like I said yesterday, or I don't remember, but thir- or this mo- today, for 30 years I've been digging stuff out and hearing disagreements, and, and I, I just don't ever let it bother me. I, I don't really – I, I want to dig it out. I want to investigate it. And I think that's the most important thing we as Christians can do is investigate it out, man, and say, so, well, let me see if I have an answer. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's, I forget where it is. I think it's in Jeremiah 30 or 33 is one of my favorite verses mm-hmm. is, is that if uh, it says, if you search me, I will, I will show you unsearchable things, mm-hmm. meaning that, that, that kind of thing. It's not even searchable to know who Cain's wife was mm-hmm. and who the people were. But if you seek God, he will show you unsearchable things, meaning I can't even find it in the Bible. I can't find it in the in the library or the Library of Congress. I can't even Google it or any any of those things. But it, unsearchable riches, the unsearchable things of God. If I seek Him, He'll show me unsearchable things. That's good, man. So good. Hey, thank you so much for hanging out with us and tuning in with us. Hope you come back tomorrow. We'll end Romans chapter one. I know we hadn't spent a lot of time in Romans, but that's the whole point of it mm-hmm. is to show you that that how God, what Ryan said, to take these. These, these unsearchable things of God, and I think they're really searchable. I think God puts them in the Word. We just got to mine them out, exactly. right? I hope to see you tomorrow, man. As I always say, remember this. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. And if anybody comes across my path that needs you, may I ever be so bold to lead them to you. Have a good day.